The full find is bigger and bigger. About 30 reporters are on the ground working undercover. We edit the pieces and we send it to Oslo. as well 
you know, at the cyclone gist, which we show, which we show, showed in, in, in the last scene of the film, they established the new constitution, which guaranteed them the veto in the parliament. You know, we cannot change anything without approval from from military. So I think they, it's, we can say they, they could abridge to to a, I'm going to say legal government, but still the same people with the same mindset. So for for the people in Burma, it's not different. Okay. Another, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, I want to for it. And Angie, if you want to come up as well, just in case you have any answers. Anyway. Okay. Are the, are the risks to journalists still similar now as they were then? Well, yeah, in a different way. They're not going to shoot uh, the camera person on the street, but there were laws and legal system that, you know, well, disrupt your, your job. Recently, uh, some, somebody from from a local press got to, 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 to prison for six months because she, she was reporting about a corruption case by the uh, when I say legal local jury. You know, there was a corruption case in you know in a town and she, she went there and interviewed. The jury let her in and then answered the interview and then I think I, I'm not sure about the detail of the conversation and interview but I can guess that you know she will challenge you know, the interviewee, and she, she has been kicked off later, mm -hmm. because, you know, say, we stop talking now, and then you go out. And the next day, she has been sued by that same jury with, you know, I'm going to say, only tran transposing the, the property mm -hmm. without permission or something like that. And he got all the witness for him, and, you know, uh, he, he built a very strong case against her and then she got into prison for six months. And we cannot do anything about that. And at the same time, the other uh, press is sued by the ministry because you know, they got uh, leaked information from, from a statistic office and it's about corruption because there were gaps you know, between different departments about their projects and they were reporting about that. And, uh, that mining industry, actually, uh, that, that, that ministry sued them and they are in a legal bill mm -hmm. and you know, all the editors are going every week to, to court. So, you know, yep. you can do your job as a journalist with the protection of the law. Mm -hmm. That's what they are doing now. So, what do you think is needed for further change? Um, do you need to think the public needs to engage a bit more in, in their riots? Do you think there are demonstrations rather than there should be future uh, demonstrations? Or do you think it needs more international influence and, and participation from sort of the West? Or well, yes, I, I, you know, I feel very good about international community being in Burma. Mm. They need to engage more, but at the same time, I want responsible engagement. I mean, the, the British government is now training troops in Burma how to handle the, the, the you know, uh, riots, let's say. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, they, they come in, they give a lot of money to, to the government troops, the uh, riot police, and, and they go back. And then, you know, they, they don't care about what they will do next. And we need responsibility about that. And I think people like you can push to the governments, uh, you know, to, to take care of what they are doing. I mean, check and balance, that's what we need. And also about the money. Um, since the regime's time, um, to, to name some countries, such as South Korea and Japan, I mean, they, they give funding to, direct to the government. I, and now other countries like Denmark and Norway and, you know, even the UK are doing the same thing uh, for different projects. But, I, you know, I, I'm not sure how much they are, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna say um, transparent towards you know British uh, public or even for British government, and we need to know um, where these findings are going, where how much they are spending in the you know in the areas where they are intend, intended to be. So I think you know uh, ignorance will will make a disaster in Burma because you know they are cutting a political sport by by engaging, but at the same time you know they, they have money and they have uh, technical skills and <coughs> other things. And if we don't control what they are doing, the government will stay oppressing you know the, the, the people. And the, I mean, does the uh, does the free press in Burma does it need funding and tools? Are there things that can be provided by that could be provided by outsiders? Is it like uh, better yeah. cameras or? Yeah, actually, Ash. we we really really need support from Indonesian community about that because uh, you know there are a lot of journalists who are, when I say, who want to be independent from from cronies, but. Because of the system inside Burma, I mean, we cannot run a, a, a paper or a television station or a radio. You know, they, people with such a big amount of money, they got license, they, they, they can kick, you know, other people out from the market. Mm -hmm. And then people like us, we have to go and work for them. So they have editorial control. <coughs> and there are several issues uh, like, you know, you got a phone call in the middle of the night when you are, you know, when the, the news are in the press. Then you stop the press, you go to the, you know, uh, airport to collect all the newspaper back because there is a news at the front page about, you know, corruption or whatever they want pe other people to see. So, uh, you know, if we, if there are more, you know, uh, there, there, there is more independent media. There will be, uh, you know, more transparency in Burma, and it will balance such thing. Um, it seems the government really crossed the line. Perhaps the public won't expect to cross when they adopted the um, the monks. Yeah. I was wondering, a, what happened to them, and b, do you think that they could be the centre of uh, another uprising in the future? Uh, the monk. Uh, I'm not quite sure about uh, monks, but uh, they are still in the uh, leading position in the political process in Burma. And the government knows that, and they are trying to manipulate with some, uh, some monks who they, you know, who they can control to do what you know, they tell them to do. So uh, we, we, we have some problems with the, uh, when I say, Burmese Muslims about, you know, these issues. And a lot of people believe that the government is manipulating, you know, in the issues by using some, you know, puppets that they, they, they penetrate in, in the cycle. <coughs> Yep, go ahead. Sorry, and then please. Do you still have connections with the original member of your uh, network? So do you know whether they had to flee the country or whether they could integrate and be able to fly? Sorry. So, I mean, uh, the members of your original network. Yeah. Do you know about them, what they are doing, whether they are still in the country uh, or they have to leave? Yeah, my, my other journalist. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He, he is <laughs> one of my colleagues. And actually, he is a guy uh, who has been arrested when they, they took all the computers and others from the headquarters. He, he has been arrested at that, on that day. <coughs> and then um, he, he left <coughs> Well, we, we came here on the same day. So now it's like I am independent back with <laughs> another. Uh, with another organization, BBC, and he is running a new network called Mama VJ Media Network. And uh, some of them, some of my former colleagues were working with him, 
and some work with uh, DVB that we worked uh, before. Um, it's kind of DVB got permission to go back in and ran an office in Rangoon at the uh, main city in Lama. So it's, they are sp spread around and some of them we gave independent journalists and some are working for China News Asia or writers or other organizations. So uh, people move on but they are still you know, on, on the same, same uh, course. The scene in the film where um, everyone is marching to Dosu's house, that's just like such a beautiful scene. It's so, um, every time I watch it, it's get really emotional. But um, I'm wondering now if, if anyone in the network or if you personally have changed your views on, on Dosu like after she's entered politics and now she's actually part of the current government. Well, yeah, she is more pra pragmatic now. And uh, some, there, 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 there are some people who Things she is, uh, when I say, uh, when I say, she is compromising too much with the uh, authorities, and some things uh, because she became an opposition leader, her role as a public figure became degraded, or many opinions about her, but still. People consider she is the, the, the one who will lead, and people agree on that. Just there are a few, when I say, uh, different opinions on, on the way she is approaching on that. So she is still our leader. <laughs> And the man that was mentioned at the beginning of the film, uh, you found out about is it Kyle Co Co maybe? Yeah. And, and he was was he arrested or killed at the end? Of it? Uh, the film didn't really. He he. Oh, come on. He he is uh, working with the DVB now. He yeah. is like some like <coughs> the chief of all that. He he do management more than the camera work. And, and the um, journalists that were arrested have been largely released. Is that? They all have been released. Okay. And um, some of them uh, worked with uh, Tosu. Yeah. Uh, one of our colleagues is uh, now working with Tosu closely. He is a media person. Uh -huh. yeah. and most people from our network, and they are also a former political prisoner. Mm -hmm. They just not only uh, journalists, but yeah. also a political editors. Sure. And me as well. Yeah. Very, very nice to meet you. I did one question actually. Uh, one thing from the film is about how the military, they, they had to sort of the last group, if you like, that had this big decision to make as to whether to stay doing jobs and following orders or whether they also would change their mentality and take different action. Um, did, did, was there any, sim any sign that they might um, do what you were hoping they would do it and, and, and change what they were doing? Was, was there any dissent from the military that you could see? Well, they, uh, there, are, there are some generals who think they cannot be headliners all the time and they cannot go on like that you know, forever. So they try to change to another type, such as you know, uh, civilian government with strict military constitution like that, you know, they take beetles and everything. We, they are, even those people, they are okay. Uh, when I say they are okay with it, change and you know, reform and other things. But when we get to uh, changing the constitution, you know, uh, when I say talking about veto in the parliament or um, something like government uh, military business that runs in, inside Burma without giving text to the state or things like that. If, if we talk about that, they became headliners again. So I think, you know, the basic concept of, you know, the way they think is still the same, just different forms. So I think it's going to be difficult still. Um, I have a question about that. It took them a long, it seems like it took a Based on the military intelligence, the network, it took them a long time to find you at the headquarters. 
based on how good they are, that kind of thing. Uh, why did it take them so long, and how did they find them? In the end? Um, after the uh, 2000 Man Revolution, um, they, they, they arrested uh, um, Como um, uh, before uh, they arrested me. Mm. Um, they, they tortured Como um, and questioned uh, about our headquarters office. Okay. So they, they know about me. They, that's why after that uh, they knew the um, place of our headquarters. That's why they, they arranged. And did you, did all the VJs know where the headquarters were? Um, no, not no, everybody. Just, 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 just uh, four, four people. Okay, so it was on But I, I called him not to go back there. <laughs> and he said, he go and interview with a prominent uh, activist. So he tried to upload it to the Norway. And while he is uploading, he got arrested. The, we have a, a very good cover uh, story. At the time, I'm running an um, advertising agency, so they, 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 they didn't know about me. Uh, they just know about I'm running a uh, own business. So one, one day, uh, made an um, interrogated at me, and a major, uh, major of um, special police, uh, special um, uh, army, and um, he, he told me. What are you doing uh, like the um, uh, political thing? You should do uh, your own business. Uh, I, I didn't answer anything to him. Uh, so that's why I just got two years. Two years center. If, if they know uh, about me uh, uh, more than I will get at least uh, 20 years or 25 years. As, uh, at the time, Kumo uh, got 15 years. Uh, 17 years. 17. Uh, that, you know, the changes in the uh, military intelligence. Kenyon was, you know, removed from the position a few few years earlier, and then uh, the new people, you know, took over to the, to the position. So before, you know, he is removed, all his uh, records were destroyed, and you know, his records in prison. Uh, also disappeared. So when you know he, he pretend like I mean was and they used me to do this thing blah blah blah. Uh, they, they they believed him and he got only two years sentence. And did you spend two years in prison? Yeah. I ran mm -hmm. his um, in two thousand nine. And what were you charged with? What was the what was the crime? What was the offence? It's um um the, that uh, there was a uh, uh, five oh one it's a rumor, rumors, uh, some uh, rumors and news for um, current government. Okay. So spreading rumors about the government. Yeah, spreading rumors. Okay. Are there any more questions? Is it helpful to your cause that tourism is seen as a growth industry? Yeah. And I, I was there three weeks ago. Yeah. Didn't pick any of this up in the street. Very happy people. So is tourism, is that, is that a, a good thing or...? Well, it must be a good thing, sure. Is it an advantage? You don't want too many wins. Well, yes. I mean, we, we talked about... I, I, our, our friends at <laughs> the back row have been campaigning for Obama for many years. Um, they, 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 they might have some ideas about... I think there used to be a boycott on tourism, but now the official it's position of yeah. San Suu Kyi and her party is that... Um, they welcome imports, tourists, you know, they don't really want the luxury package for us, but people are interested in learning about that and, and you know, have some sympathy for what's going on. I mean, a lot of tourists just, you know, send out, you know, pretty photographs of smiling faces and they don't understand that there's a big um, war against ethnic groups. I mean, I it's not to catch them in the shine being attacked by the Burmese military. And then with the Karen, you know, they put the world's longest running civil war, about uh, 3,700 villages have been destroyed by the Burmese army. So at the moment, one of the big things that's going on besides the uh, political changes in Rangoon is the ethnic groups are all getting together and they're discussing having a federal system, and this is one of the big issues about changing the constitution. Uh, while they're having peace talks, the Burmese military just keeps attacking them, and now, even last week, they were attacking destroying villages, and 
often the tourists just have no idea about this at all. They're just you know, posting you know, everything that's great in that world. It's really just useful propaganda for the government. But it is, because the tourists are providing jobs for people in the hotels, but you've got to understand that often a lot of property is stolen, you know, by the military will steal land from farmers and they will get sold to foreign companies or to good hotels and in the past there's been great use of course very good to build airports and things like this. So well tourism becomes a negotiating point, doesn't it? In terms of diplomatic relationships. They don't want to lose tourism, do they? They would like to be, yes, they would like to yeah. increase tourism. So it becomes a negotiation. We, we work, well, only if, only if they know that you might do something about it at the moment. The Europe has lifted all of its sanctions, really, so it's not, it's not really a negotiation. No, it's all this here that's trouble. Well, yes, if there's a big, yeah. if something like this happens again, then they do. I have two quick questions. Why, when you decided to leave the Soviet Union, how did you find your way to the Norwegian? Well, they've been, uh, I mean, DVB has been there for about uh, 17 years when we started working with them. Because when Suti was um, awarded uh, the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, they want, you know, she, she couldn't come to, to collect the prize at the time because she's in, you know, house arrest. And um, the Norwegian, the Norwegian uh, government was very sympathy about that and they, they asked uh, Bami's opposition, what do you want? And we said, we want a radio. Norwegians were, you know, they, they were occupied by, by Germans during the Second World War and, and their exile government broadcast back to Norway, broadcast their radio back to Norway in Norwegian language from London. They used to do that, and they feel very touched about you know me, <laughs> about us uh, you know asking for a radio station, so they allow us to be there. Because you know radio thing is quite complicated because you need a government to sponsor you because you need to license and frequency you know registration things like that. So they they have a big favor for us. Mm -hmm. And my second quick question. Uh, during the 2007 demonstration in Rangoon, were some other demonstrations in other cities? And if yes, uh, were there some uh, some of your guys operating there? So well, yeah, we, we had a lot of uh, uh, coverage on other areas as well. But, uh, you know, because the news need to be, uh, because speed, fairness, accuracy, blah, 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 we, we, we learn as a journalist. So, uh, because of the communication, it is really, I have some device that I can, you know, operate to connect to, to know it. But, you know, if I have another journalist with a videotape a few miles away from me, I cannot connect to him because the communication, you know, among families in, in Burma.